Uh, I am Freedom One, and this is HearingGod.tv, a uh, weekly time of intercession and prayer, and invite everyone to join in uh, with your requests and also in praying for others. Um, and also, uh, if people ask uh, spiritual questions or whatever, just kind of um, address those as well. But right now, we just thank you and praise you, Jesus, and thank you that this was able to work um, as disheartening as it can be sometimes to get on here. I thank you that you instill that perseverance and uh, that uh, it wins. So, thank you, Jesus. We just come into your presence, Lord. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, where two or more are gathered. There you are in the midst. And so, we just receive you. We receive all that you have for us today. We submit ourselves to you, Lord Jesus. We laud you as Lord and King of all. And we thank and praise you for all that you are doing, even in these last days. Uh, helping us to refine and grow and, and uh, be prepared for eternity. Thank you, Jesus. We just welcome your peace, Lord Jesus. We welcome your deep peace. We bind up anxiety right now in the mighty name of Jesus and we command it to go to the footstool of Jesus Christ for judgment. It has no place. No place. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you, this is your time. This is your time. We thank you and we turn it over to you. We just ask, Lord Jesus, that you would grow us during this time. Enlarge our hearts and help us to grow and in, in conform into your mighty image. Just thank and praise you, Lord Jesus. Amen. The forum is at hearinggod.proboards.com. If anyone's wondering, I have a section called Prayer, and I encourage people to post their prayer requests on there. Um, not only, you know, so that more people can see it than just me, everyone can be praying throughout the week or whenever you post it. Okay, last week, um, we had uh, the our browser had crashed a couple times. I had to bring it back up, and during that uh, trying man, he had a kind of a two-part prayer request, and we had been praying regarding uh, I believe it was um, was it anxiety with him, or it was trauma. It was trauma. So we had been praying about trauma. And he, he had a part two, which I, I missed, so I wanted to definitely not miss it now. But um, he was asking for prayer about his finances. And so we definitely want to uphold that. And the beautiful thing about praying like this is that if you also find yourself in a position where you would like prayer for finances then you just claim it for yourself too. We lift up the brethren and we also claim it for ourselves too. Um, it's just like in the Bible, the things that, that David cried out for, we, we have access to cling on to those things too and proclaim for ourselves. So anytime we're praying, um, you know, if you have a loved one going through something, you claim it for them. Lord God, we just thank and praise you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that... Um, you are our everything, that you hold us in the palm of our hand. Even in the, in the times of the Bible when they could not see the provision. What about the woman that was just about ready to die? She had enough food for her son and herself and she was ready to die and the prophet came. And then she gave what she had to him, you know. Um, but there was that promise there, and I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you come with that promise. That you will protect us, that, uh, that physical means do not hold us bound, but that the ones that are called, the ones that come, the ones that worship you in spirit and truth can lay hold to those promises of complete protection 
I thank you, Lord Jesus, when we see no way, that there is a way. And you open that door, and I thank and praise you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that uh, you even bless our finances. That you meet our needs in every way, for our physical body, for our spiritual body, and all things work to the good of those that love and serve you. So we lay hold to that, Lord Jesus, and we thank and praise you. We just ask your blessing upon trying man as he is uh, desiring uh, ways to bring the finances in. I just ask that you would give him uh, you know, your revelation on what you would have done in his life, that the eyes would be completely open and that uh, he would see the way and walk into it. Thank you, Jesus, and praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I received that, too. And we, we had a blessing, too. Um, um, we have, uh, my husband had to make a decision about doing another, uh, scheduling in another job. And the thing is, is when we schedule a job, we have to have the finances to buy material. Then we can go out, and then the money comes in. And that, that's the problem. It's like having to balance everything out. Um, you know, we always have just enough. <laughs> um, but yesterday we we're, were talking about stuff, and he's like, boy, you know, this next one, if I schedule it, it's going to be a real stretch. And then, boom, uh, get a $200 check in the mail, and he's like, ah, we're going to be fine now. <laughs> So I just wanted to testify, um, you know, God is awesome. He does, he does uh, provide. Alright, um, Gossia asked for prayer regarding soul ties. Um, she's watched uh, the Spiritual House Cleaning Series um, video on soul ties. Um, it, in doing so, uh, first of all, she, it never dawned on her about the whole soul ties thing. And in there, you know, got the scripture about David and Jonathan being knit together and, and just, you know, all the examples that I had in there as well. But she realized that she was wounded by many people and tied to many people spiritually. So now, um, uh, is praying for God to deliver her from the ungodly ties, the destructive ones, and the woundings from from them. So, uh, so we can agree with her on that. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your servant and her heart, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She wants out of this hamster wheel. She recognizes it. She sees what, what it's done. And she knows through the word that it's your truth. So, Lord God, we just agree that every, every tie will be revealed unto her so that she will not forget that she will be able to mine each one out and so that each one shall be cut in the mighty name of Jesus. I just thank and praise you, Jesus. Oh, I thank and praise you, Jesus. Ooh, I feel some warmth on that one. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Yeah, I I felt a really a lot uh, burning in my stomach over that. So I I really have full confidence that the Lord is um, showing her everything, and I'm excited because when I feel that burning in there, I really feel like there's she's really willing. She sees it, she knows it, and she's gonna fight for her freedom. So that's really awesome. All right, um, on to another one. Okay, we had prayed for um, 
Bimba Shuki Nebakara Boko Nebakara for a Bani um, who went through um, distortions of youth, which if you look that up, it's just basically, you know, you're in a big family, it's too big, and uh, abuses can happen. And so she's, she's had some issues um, that have wounded her deeply, and it's um, affected her in her adult life. Um, and and the, a, a big thing the enemy likes to do is just rob, rob us from relationships and um, anything that would mirror what he wants with himself, you know. It's like the whole man and wife thing here on earth mirrors um, our, can mirror our relationship with Father God. If it's in a right light, of course, it, it can be a wonderful thing. And so, um, just any kind of relationships and um, trusting and, you know, because when you have those uh, woundings, violations that are so horrible, um, you know, uh, you just, you shut down and you turn off in those areas. So, I just feel most led, um, because, um, you know, Bill is in a you know, trying to work his relationship out with Bonnie, but I just feel um, just most led to just pray for her um, on 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 her end. Um, and she knows the Lord. She knows the Lord. It's just these woundings can get so deep that um, you know there's there's a lot there, and so uh, let's just pray. Um, his deep love over her and the better son that up now back and up 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 and the prayers of the righteous avail much lord jesus we just hold up bonnie to you you know all the things that she had to to endure and to go through and while those things happened, you were indeed sorrowful, and you did not want those things. But that's the thing, the enemy has access in this life. So we just ask, Lord Jesus, for your healing over her, healing every, every wound in her soul. I just ask, Lord Jesus, that you would just surround her with people that will uphold her, and encourage her and bless her, Lord Jesus, in her walk with you. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are so tender and so gentle and so loving uh, to guide us along. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your promises that you are so near to the brokenhearted. So, Lord Jesus, we just uh, bind up a broken heart over Bonnie right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind that up. And we loose your your pure love over her. Your healing uh, love that extends far more than we can even comprehend. That you would go in and heal her up and show her your love, Lord Jesus, your perfection. We just ask, Lord Jesus, indeed, that you would just surround her with with friends and uh, encouragement uh, from the body of Christ that would be there to help her uh, get through uh, everything and that uh, she would come out running uh, on the other side. In the mighty name of Jesus. All right. So, blessings to Bonnie. All right. Um, James is not having a fun time. Um, uh, he, you know, he's he's been suffering the whole um, organic brain dysfunctions, which ironically started from some kind of virus, you know. And, uh, boy... That's a bummer, you know? <laughs> um, but anyhow, um, 
he's suffering the flu on top of this. Um, the organic brain dysfunction is kind of, you know, it messes with the wiring between the brain and the mind. And so it can make it very difficult. And obviously the flu is just, you know, if you're already laid out, <laughs> the flu is no fun, no, no fun or welcome guess. So, um, and the other thing is, is, um, that uh, his mother also is in the uh, the hospital with it, but a step further into pneumonia. So uh, I know so many of, you know, everybody says, oh, it's going around. Um, this is really, you know, you've seen the news. Uh, the flu thing uh, this year has really jumped on, up and progressed and so, um, Lord Jesus, we just place James before you and anyone uh, else that, uh, that you know of that has the flu or has pneumonia, just uh, agree for them as well. We place him before you, Lord Jesus. Declare your power over him. Greater are you, O Lord God, than anything that would try to rob, to steal, to destroy. So we call on the name of Jesus with complete faith and trust. As we speak your name, Jesus, we believe in the, in the truth of its power. We believe that when we speak your name, Jesus, that it goes forth as it did when you conquered death. As it did when you rose from the grave. You said that we would do many things in your name. So we declare that as we speak your name, Lord Jesus, that these things are being cut away. We just command the access of this flu. And then the pneumonia, in the mighty name of Jesus, you have no authority here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Greater is Jesus. Greater is Jesus. We will impart that resurrection life, that abundant life, into these bodies. And we declare deliverance from what the enemy would desire to uh, drag us down and harm us further. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Woo! Jesus. Jesus. We just bask in your glory, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you did for us. We receive that. We receive that. And we implement it into our lives with victory. And as always, James, perseverance, right? <laughs> Perseverance. All right. And, uh, yeah, I know. It's a lot of fun getting fought. <laughs> um, Build the Farm requests prayer for his dad and family finances. Um, and he says his dad has been sick with the fluish bron bronchial bronchitis kind of stuff, which we just prayed for, um, that, that everyone seems to have, it's been hanging around for like a month, uh, and on top of that, last Friday, um, he got let go from his job, you know, uh, that he had for 25 years, so that's kind of hard. Uh, indeed, we do want to agree in prayer, Brava Kenoboga, for Build the Farm's father, we again we agree regarding uh, the illness and we just 
ko ki ki sakana pa ba shukte da pa ke re pa ka ba brebe ke ne pa ka pa ke pe ke re brebe ke re pa ka ra pa ka pa pa ke we rip up that extension <laughs> that this thing has had in the mighty name of Jesus we declare it void and powerless against him we declare health brebe ke pe ke pa ke renewed strength within him Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you use Build the Farm to indeed encourage uh, his family. Because that's what the enemy wants to do, is pick us apart bit by bit. And we declare that uh, even with the loss of a job, that his spirit shall not be disturbed within him, but that he shall trust and hang on to the Almighty Father. I thank you, Lord Jesus, even in the impossibilities, that these things are only doorways. These are only new beginnings, only new things, but all under your hand of care. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that this household of faith is beneath your wing of care. I thank you, Lord Jesus, and I declare provisions met in Jesus' mighty name. May they blow in from the north, south, east, and west. Their provision be secured in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Amen. And for Ginger. Um, yes, tasted praying in the spirit, finding a struggle or a blockage in doing so, uh, in going further with it um, and knowing that she's called to let loose <clears throat> in praise and worship but just many attacks from the enemy in hampering doing so so and I can share um, that obviously when I start this broadcast every week um, the kids act up. Um, I didn't feel good. Uh, I was laying down like an hour or so before this. I just did not feel good. My head started hurting. Um, you know, and that's what the enemy does. He puts you in the vice. And so it's like that perseverance, that perseverance. Well, you know, I've got to overcome uh, <laughs> by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony the word of my testimony I must testify to myself that I've done this before I can do it again I gotta pick up and keep going keep going keep going um, so because I know that when I step out that the Lord isn't calling me to step out alone when I invite him here um, at the very beginning he shows up I'm not, I'm not saying idle words. I'm saying, you know, Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. Uh, we invite you in. And then I believe it. I believe it and I know it. And so um, that's kind of like um, something that I can share um, with you. Um, is that um, he has got to be the focus um, there is a lot of things around and you know if you're in a if you're in a group or in a church um, you know it's easy to look around you but you know like when, when you're in your quiet time that's where it can begin and it can begin by when you're reading the word um, you know, and the Psalms is a great place where you can really enter in because um, you, you hear in David's words that he is brutally honest with the Lord. He is so honest, you know, when he's in despair, he, he says, hey, I'm this, and, you know, he cries out to the Lord, and he's so honest in just bearing his soul, bearing his heart. And so that's, that's how it can happen. Uh, in your quiet time is you just begin to just be brutally honest with the Lord you're not saying rote prayers and just uh, repetition but you're 
you're just being real as if he's your spouse in front of you um, you're talking to him your deepest sincerest things and that begins to grow the trust and the love so that when you go out into the public arena you know you're talking about um, singing in church and the, the thoughts begin to assault you and you're looking around and, and the enemy yeah he's playing he's playing you a little bit there getting you to think of trying to make you more concerned about what other people are thinking and, and their judgments or whatever but that's when we have to have the blinders on just like we're, when we're in our quiet place and we're focused on him and being honest and just trusting and loving him that when we flow out in into the arena where other people are we still have our blinders on and so that when you feel that you know when when you're called to sing you're singing to him and to him alone it's your sacrificial offering you're focused on him and realizing that there's persecutions all around us um, there's judgments all around us that those things are never going to leave um, but the Lord calls us to take things captive that oppose that oppose what his truth is and so when you're in your quiet time and you're soaking in the word and you're absorbing those truths and then when you go out you take them with you and when those thoughts and assaults come and you bind them in the name of Jesus and you cast them to the footstool um, and you declare that you are, you are free to worship and to sing uh, to Him. Uh, you're focusing on Him. So, um, and you know you're not doing it out of pride. You're not. Um, so some of that is... Um, you know, learning to, the, taking the thoughts captive stuff. And I can share with you, um, I do have a video. Um, it's called Battlefield of the Mind, Discerning Thoughts. I'll write that down here. Uh, I will share that with you. Um, and it's kind of like when I first started on this little journey of learning to discern my thought life. Um, because that is like the number one battle battlefield because just like when when the Lord God created he spoke and it was and so if that tells you how how um, powerful words can be and so if this thought which is the suggestion from the enemy is coming forth and if we hold it and agree it with it it's like and you know and sometimes we even mirror it we begin to speak if we hear you're no good you're no good you're no good and then some instance happens you flub up and you say that where then that's where we begin to align with the enemy and then we're empowering him so learning to, when the when those assaults are coming you say no I know it's you and I bind you I cast you down you have no authority here because of and then all those times when you're in your quiet time uh, filling up on his promises then you use that double-edged sword and you say I am this and then I mean, one special thing for you is you can begin to look up uh, scriptures about singing praise. Begin to go through, use a topical Bible, uh, or, you know, you can look it up topically online. Uh, do a Google search for scriptures on praise and worship or, or something like that. And then you begin to just meditate on those. Um, so that when uh, you get attacked in that one area then those that word that double-edged sword will be fresh and then you can get it out 
and fight back right there when it comes. And it's really the same in any area of our life. Um, you know, if a person gets paralyzing fear, gets paralyzing anxiety, um, that's when they have to dig in and, and learn what the Lord says about how protected we are in Him. But that's the thing, we have to align. Uh, we either align with Him or the enemy. <laughs> so we have to choose life so that we may live. And I just want to share... Um, I was speaking with a person uh, this past week. Um, it, it's such a pivotal thing. The whole, um, the whole part about Job. Um, and I can sit here and, uh, you know, I I can sit here and and try and pantomime, okay, and if. I wish I had myself more together, <laughs> but if you look in Job, okay, he is, it talks about him, and he, he decides in his mind, these are things that the enemy cannot hear, okay, the enemy does not have access to our thoughts, what comes out of us, you know, those are the things that he can bank on, okay? He's not omniscient, omnipresent, you know, all-powerful. All He's not, okay? So, you got to understand in Job, it said that the reason why he um, would offer up these sacrifices for his uh, sons and daughters was because he was afraid that, you know, they might have went a little too far with, with their revelry and offended God, okay? He was worrying, okay? Now, understand, Satan cannot sit there and hear Job's thoughts, okay? He can't. This is what Satan sees. Here's Job building up and off an altar, which is a good and holy thing, right? Putting on the offering on the altar, burning the sacrifice. He is not in Job's mind. And so then you read down a little bit more where God essentially points Job out and says, look at this my blameless man here, you know, he's a good and, you know, a holy, righteous, blameless yeah. man. But God essentially had to point him out to Satan because God was kind of handing Job over a little to Satan, okay? Because Satan had no idea about the worry. But God sees that worry, <laughs> It's offensive to him, okay? Job was holy and everything on the outside and everything you could see, but it's the thing inside. And on the, on the other hand, let's look at David. David was kind of the opposite, huh? David um, did all these bad things or whatever. And then we hear in the Psalms of, you know, he kind of expresses some of the stuff that's in his heart or whatever. And we know that he was a man after God's own heart. And so when you compare the two, it's like, wow, you know, Job, this perfect blameless man or whatever, but God could see inside. Okay. And my whole point of saying this is God is not delighting in just handing people over. There's always a reason. And I can tell you about, you know, I don't know what percent I want to get involved with saying, but it's just about always who? <laughs> Us. In, in some way or form. Because we know that our heart is wickedly deceitful. Um, 
you know, we're very selfish. Uh, we like to think of of number one a lot, okay? Um, so it's kind of a, a powerful thing when you really think about it, um, how much God loves us, um, you know, especially with the whole David thing because it's just wonderful because uh, he screwed up big, did he not? He screwed up big, but he repented right away and take me back, Lord. Um, with the whole Job thing, that worry thing, he did continually. So God had to hand him over to kind of shake him up because that thought process is not the way to go. Uh, we, can't, we can't do that. <laughs> uh, God sees worry as sin. So... All right, I just wanted to share that. But now we can pray for you, Ginger. So we're not missing that, right? <laughs> I thank you, Lord Jesus, for my sister, Ginger. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for her heart. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that uh, you are instilling her uh, your knowledge, your divine wisdom into her, your overcoming power through the power of just stopping the enemy dead cold when those thoughts come. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that this day you've empowered her. For an extra sensitivity when the thoughts come that she will say stop and cling to you Lord Jesus that she will cling to you and use the authority that's been given her thank you Lord Jesus for the revelation of your divine authority that you give us and it is so simple we just have to exercise it I thank and praise you I just also ask, Lord Jesus, that you would indeed touch her lips, that she may sing, sing your praises, even new praises, from her heart. Bless her, Lord Jesus, that she may magnify and praise your holy name without condemnation, without fear without anything but you before her in that complete and utter freedom. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you, uh, you give her a joyful heart, that you delight in her, and that she is your worshiper. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank and praise you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless her and her family. I call forth all those voices that uh, come against her, even any witchcraft. If there be any witchcraft in, in any of her fellowships, and maybe, you know, if, if she has a sensitivity to that, Lord Jesus, I just bind any witchcraft up against her or her household of faith. Now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I declare it void and powerless. In the name of Jesus. Just ask that your angels would surround and protect her and her family. As she continues to dive in uh, in uh, serving you and uh, making your house of praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, we had too many crashes uh, on the broadcast and it was just ridiculous. So I'm just going to continue on alone. So if you're watching this after the fact, Thank you. Um, I really need to work something out, and I will try to work on that very soon or be begging and pleading someone to help me with it. <laughs> but anyhow, um, our next uh, request, uh, Isaiah 40, was asking about raising godly kids. Um, I she's asking for ideas. Um, you know, still learning. She doesn't want to wait. You know, um, she wants to be raising them up. 
Uh, she has a five-year-old and a ten-month-old. Uh, so she says the five-year-old knows the basics like praying, um, you know, um, but anyhow, um, one, one thing you have to know about kids and little children is uh, participation is important um, because they do indeed learn by example. And another thing is um, scheduling, uh, make, making the time, the repetition. Um, they kind of, they look forward to that. And that's something that, you know, um, kindergarten teachers, you know, they'll have a list of the things that they do in the morning. Um, and it's amazing, like if you would go in a room and just sit and watch what kids do when they come in, you know, in a couple of weeks after they get through the teacher's guidance, um, she really doesn't have, you know, a lot to do with them except for like on big issues because they'll come in and they'll do this and they'll do that because they're just used to their, their little calendar of instruction, you know. And uh, they, they pick up really fast on the order of things. So um, really the easiest way uh, for discipline is, um, you know, and this will be especially sweet with your 10-month-old, is, you know, prayer at supper time. You know, if, if, if it's even just like one meal of the day, um, the, the meal where the whole family's there. I know some, you know, like breakfast people are on the run, lunch, you know, one person might not be there, whatever. But the meal that everyone's there, if you make a point, and then eventually as things grow, um, you know, your uh, five-year-old may want to do the prayer. You know, everybody can take turns. And um, it begins to be something that they are excited and look forward to. Now, I have a testimony um, regarding, um, you know, I said a little bit, you know, a few weeks ago, uh, we were really sick. Um, and the order of it was I got sick, then my husband got sick, and the kids got a little touch of it, uh, just a couple of them. But while we were sick... The kids would keep coming in and, when are we going to do church, you know? And it's like, we were laid up. We, could, we couldn't. We could We just had to say, you know, we'll just have to wait till we're better. But one after another, the kids would be coming in the room. You know, hey, what about church? What about church, you know? And it's just that thing of, you know, where it, when something gets instilled, then when you fall... Uh, then others will rise to pick you up. And it's that kind of thing with kids that's really an awesome thing, is you, you start and uh, you prime the engine, and they will help keep it going. Um, so, and that's the thing. It's just, you know, it, it does take a little bit on your part. Um, but... Um, you can make it fun for yourself, too, you know. Uh, pick things that um, are of interest to you, of excitement to you, um, beyond, uh, like, a supper prayer. Um, you know, uh, my husband, he had uh, daily devotional. And he, f he found a couple of them. Now, the language on him, it's a little bit harder, and I've got, like, a fifth grader. And it's Oswald Chambers. I don't know if you've heard of him. But in the de Daily Devotional, there's just a page. And my husband put them on the table and said, Hey, these are for you guys. If any one of you would ever want to read them in the morning before school or whatever, there they are. Well, I was really surprised. Um, I had just, you know, the previous night, I was coming home with my husband from work. And he was just talking about how, you know, just how pleased he is as a father. Um, how, how he's just so happy and grateful that the kids have picked up on the important things, you know. And those things are ingrained in them. 
when other kids do things wrong, they, they will stand. And so it's like the truth has gone in them. And it's coming out of them. And he's just so happy about that. So it was really neat because I get up with the kids in the morning. And I let hubby sleep in. So I came in the kitchen and my fifth grader, he picks up the Oswald Chambers and he starts reading that devotional. And I'm like, awesome. You know, dad just suggested it very casually, didn't force it on him or anything. I just said, here, you know, <clears throat> and that's because, you know, like during church, we really get the kids involved. You know, we'll have prayer and praise and everybody will think of, of things uh, to be thankful for and you know it's just the whole interaction thing so <clears throat> I was really blessed that after the kids went to school and hubby came out um, I, I said guess what you know what you were just saying last night about the kids just being on the right track and uh, I said, guess what your, your middle son did? And boy, was he beaming. He was just so pleased um, because he was just talking about that. And then it was like, there it is, manifested again. Um, I can say on my Freedom So One channel, um, I did post a few Bible studies with boys. Um, and that's just things um, where... Anytime you, you see something in real life and you can uh, think of parables, of things to share, uh, you can uh, take those things of real life and then turn it into a teaching and add the scriptures to it and turn, turn it into uh, something tangible. And that's something my husband and I are, are really bent on is, you know, you can read the scripture but how do you make it real? You know, it has to be real to them. It can't be something that's Greek, you know. <laughs> so how can you relate um, those things uh, and make them, make them understandable in, in reality? And it's just, um, you know, application. You're taking the word and... And when things happen, just seeking the Lord and saying, hey, you know, this with my kids, what can I do? And, you know, anytime you ask him, he'll show you. So uh, always seeking him. And I was just sharing, you know, I've shared this before. If you're in the car with the kids, it's the best thing because you have a captive audience. You don't have to have the music blaring. Uh, you can take any current event that's going on something that they've been talking about, family issues, extended family things that are going on, and just talk about them in the car and then bring the biblical application into it. Or, you know, this happened because of this. Um, in the Word it says this, you know. So those are, are things that are awesome um, that can begin to grow with the kids. Um, but part of it is just you, you finding an angle, you know, something that you enjoy, something that touches you personally, um, and, and rolling with it. Because if they see your excitement and your enjoyment in the Word, uh, then they'll want to participate and stuff. So, um, you know, even, you know, like at, at, at dinner or whatever, if, if you just, everybody go around the table and just say, let's give thanks for one thing tonight. What can you be thankful for? And even the 10-month-old, even the um, you know, they'll just want to participate. And it will begin to grow. So, good stuff. All right, let me check. <clears throat> All right, Shell would love to ask for prayer for her son Michael who is soon to be released from prison uh, he was a meth addict for 10 years does not want to return to it amen he has accepted Jesus but wants to be closer to him and needs strength and guidance in his life so uh, she's asking for that prayer and we're going to say amen um, 
I do want to implore the spiritual house cleaning series. Um, I have it on a playlist on YouTube under the Freedoms01 account or the Hearing God account on YouTube. Do check it out because it will get, give you some understanding on um, the struggles um, that people have can have a spiritual root. And so you can have Jesus in there and have that desire, but the enemy could have a foothold via the addiction. And so what does the Lord call us to do is to bind and to loose. And so we can bind uh, that spirit of addiction uh, and uh, loose uh, freedom in Jesus. And, you know, that's the whole thing is just, you know, having, having that, uh, that abode for the Holy Spirit, uh, kicking any, any access point the enemy may have uh, out. So, um, you know, and I don't know what kind of um, uh, spiritual stuff he's come in, you know, as he came to the Lord in prison or whatever, that, um, you know, what kind of understanding that he has. But um, I tell people, it's like uh, a Christian, a born-again Christian, t speaking in tongues, that's me. But a few years ago, I got the great understanding on the ministry of deliverance, that it isn't for possessed people. Jesus administered this into the house of God. There is true that there are areas of our soul, uh, whether wounding or soul ties or, or whatever, where we actually give a, a foothold not for total possession, but access where the enemy can get in there. And so, um, you know, the spiritual house cleaning series is just absolutely everything I did. Uh, and I did self-deliverance. And things physically, you know, it came off of me. Uh, I really felt things happening. And uh, so that's all I've got is my testimony. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, Christians can have a demon, if, you know. <laughs> um, so, we will indeed pray for Michael. And we do declare uh, he does not want to return to uh, drugs at all. And so we just thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, and we just ask that you would just send forth your angels to surround him and protect him. And give him that revelation, Lord Jesus. Empower him in your mighty word. Empower him in your most holy scriptures, Lord Jesus. And help him to cry out, Brebeket, the most powerful name above all names, your name, Jesus. For the enemy will always try to return. But we stand. We stand in your authority, Jesus. Addiction, we just bind you in the mighty name of Jesus. You are not welcome here. You are not welcome. We lose the opposite of addiction. And that is it's just the contentment in you, Lord Jesus. That you are that sufficiency. You fill that spot, that God hole inside of him. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you that, that uh, Michelle... Um, Brabeke is there to also help and support him in prayer. We just ask that your blessing will flow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. He needs your guidance, Lord Jesus. All right. Well, um, as it always seems when I when I have all these problems with the technical stuff. Um, I'm 
it's draining to think if I've missed anything. Um, so I'm not sure <laughs> if I have or not. But uh, do bear with me if I have. I, I do apologize. Um, but I do pray to get through uh, these technical loops so that we can uh, go through uh, unhindered. So I do ask for your prayer uh, regarding um, a, a lasting solution uh, for the live prayer uh, broadcast stuff. So, um, and like I said, I'm feeling maybe the Google Hangouts. Um, so I'm asking for a supernatural quick knowledge and understanding on how it works and how I can uh, use it um, efficiently for what my aim is. So I appreciate your prayers and uh, thank you all for those that persevered through the crashes and whatnot and for those that are, are watching this after the fact. Uh, blessing to you and um, uh, again if I've forgotten anything <laughs> we'll get it next week God bless you all in Jesus Amen